this community good afternoon to one and all let me extend a hearty welcome to all of you to this national webinar i extend a special welcome to our today's resource person dr bhavani akapedi financial inclusion and social change enthusiast associate professor laila bhavani second the bank great academician a good researcher a resource person person nation and international training programs author of ap uss meritorious teacher panel member and a very active and enthusiastic person in ap and telangana why i spell this ap and telangana she did uh, her uh, pg and the phd in the uh, andhra pradesh but working in telangana both the uh, uh, twin states are lucky enough to have this uh, our dr bhavani ma'am so i request uh, mrs r chitama associate professor in uh, politics uh, to introduce our today resource person dr bhavani garu to the gathering Good afternoon, everyone. I am R. Chittama, Assistant Professor in Political Science. I take this opportunity to introduce our today's resource person, Dr. Akkapadi Bhavani, Financial Inclusion and Social Change Enthusiast, Associate Professor in Loyola Academy, Secunderabad. Dr. Bhavani has been teaching different courses in economics for the students of economics and management for the past 27 years. She presented and published research papers on gender issues, labor force participation, wage rates of male and female labor, financial inclusion, cropping pattern etc she also developed teaching classes in economics dr bhavani worked as project consultant in national institute of rural development and panchayati raj hyderabad she also worked at symbiosis law school bangalore sivasivani institute of management secunderabad and maristella college vijayawada as a financial inclusion and social change enthusiast dr bhavani worked on various research projects titled impact evaluation of financial inclusion programs upas ac in uttarakhand stri nidhi a digital innovation in indian microfinance sector and an evaluation of easy of access to finance by msees an empirical study in india while she was at center for entrepreneurship development and financial inclusion at the national institute of rural development and panchayati raj hyderabad she is one of the resource persons for the house national and international training programs conducted by cedfi nirdpr and in collaboration with other agencies like center for international cooperation and training in agriculture banking as an author dr bhavani contributed a lot 
to the Andhra Pradesh Open School Authors of the Course Material Microeconomics for MA Economics Correspondence Course, which was edited by Professor C. S. N. Raju. The management of Maristella College rewarded her for her meritorious teaching in the year 1999. By UDC at Usmania University. This was telecasted in Doordarshan and UGC's first higher educational voice channel. She has been the resource person, panel member, and chaired various sessions for seminars and workshops at different colleges. OUPG College, Secondary Anura Group of Institutions, Hyderabad, New Arijon College, Bangalore, Aurora PG College, and Maristella College for some of them. She initiated the corporate social responsibility wing, Sanghi Bhav, at Sivasivani Institute of Management, Secondary she led the financial inclusion drive with the support of the students and communicated with the nationalized commercial banks. The program was a great success in connecting people with the banking system. She also initiated a program called Earn While You Learn. Earn While You Learn in 2004 at Maristella's college, which helped many students to be financially independent and brought awareness among them. With more than 27 years of experience in teaching and many other accomplishments, she not only trained her students to be successful and knowledgeable, but also inspired them with her accomplishments to pursue their dreams. We are very fortunate to have you with us today, madam. Thank you. Thank you, Miss, for a nice introduction. Really, we are lucky enough. Now, I invite uh, Dr. Bhavani Akapedi ma'am uh, to give your talk on increasing unemployment among women and educated over to ma'am good afternoon yes, am i audible ma yes ma'am yes ma'am okay now, i want one of the students to switch on the video and respond to me saying that how much of time they would like to give me uh, without getting bored I want one of the students to switch on the video, tell me till what time they are ready to listen to my session. Okay, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. As your wish, ma'am. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, very disciplined colleges. Uh, <laughs> Yes, madam, you could take it, whatever the amount of time, no problem. Madam? Madam? Not audible, madam. No? No, oh, ma'am. Ma'am, mute loan the ma'am. Correct. Now audible? 
yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am am i audible now yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am ah, yes, ma okay. thank you so much thank you so much uh, uh so uh who is this leela come on tell me how much time are you giving me leela uh -huh. or anusha how much of time you are giving me ma'am vanna ma'am okay very good nice Thank okay you, so you remind me it's your responsibility to remind me at uh, 340 now it's 240 less than that i'll try to take less than that okay okay mm. i want uh, leela to switch on the video sir namaste madhu babu sir madam namaste hmm. leela sir, uh, namaste. why no. women the topic of women is very important 190435 please switch on the video tell me i want the students to respond how the topic of women is important i want a session which is very very interactive already to some extent our creativity is lost we are unable to meet each one okay there are issues of such kind okay uh, so uh, at least we will make it as interactive as possible though it is online okay so leela because your name is uh, seen to be uh, i am able to see your name okay that uh, that's what i am making you talk to come on leela because uh, they are playing very important role in our life ma'am how oh. why women are important we do not have men studies is there anywhere uh, did you see any department talking about women uh, men studies yes or no hmm no ma'am ah then how why women are very important <laughs> tell me ma'am you, you gave me one hour okay so if you are able to see there are no right answers there are no wrong answers we are social scientists right when we are into social science there is no uh, exact answer for anything otherwise there is nothing that which is uh, wrong or right it depends on the implementation okay and ideas are very very different from one to the other one for one capitalism may, go, may be good for another one socialism may be good for another one mixed economy they may feel good for one uh, taxing the rich is good for another one uh, lesser taxes are good so there are different opinions different um, ideologies come on why women are important why are we talking about women and um, uh, women studies and all these things mam it's in our culture itself mam since uh, oh. uh, in from the past we started to give importance to women mam oh uh, even if we look at uh, look at the goddesses we have many women i mean uh, we worship uh, women ma'am oh and also in rigvedic time uh, we have given importance to women to ma'am sakish sarayola hmm okay very nice that means of course you are very young okay uh, did not see the life as on now a protected child okay uh, under the shelter of the parents so naturally uh, what you read in the textbooks you believe that okay uh, whatever you said is very right but the condition of the women is not that good because of that we are talking more about women okay i mean to say uh, that is uh, there are different that is you are talking about culture gave lot of importance to women and all that if that is the case the work participation rate of the women literacy amongst women education amongst women should be at par with other men it's not so uh you sitting in st teresa college i sitting at maristella college all around us are women teachers are women students are women so we feel that every woman is doing very good and every woman is educated because our world is so small but in reality it's not so 
you and me are not the average indian women i'm talking to the students even leela whoever spoke to me okay uh, you and me are the fortunate lot of the women okay because of our parents we we are born to them because of that we are like this today we are being educated i was educated at maristella you are being educated at st teresa these words are from my heart i am like this today only because of maristella otherwise even the family did not encourage for my education much because cultural okay get her married that is still that is they want me to be happy only but not education so there are some social and uh, cultural things uh, him becoming hindrance and not only that there are so many other things so to discuss about all those things and how they have an impact on uh, employment of women that is we call it as in economics as a labor force participation rate and uh, whether uh, they are more uh, mostly employed or unemployed we have this particular session uh, some 2 3 years back maybe around 2 years back just before covid maybe uh, just around or before uh, just before covid i had uh, one lecture uh, at maristella college i had, i was uh, the resource person at uh, maristella college delivering a similar lecture of such kind related to women and unemployment it was physical i was talking to the students i am talking to you now i want you to respond one of you at least okay unmute and respond are you urban yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am are you educated yes ma'am yes ma'am ma are you young yes ma'am yes ma'am ma are you women yes yes ma'am yes ma'am these are the ones who have high unemployment rates are you getting me compared to rural no. compared to rural urban unemployment is high of course in rural areas also now unemployment is increasing that's a different issue but otherwise compared to rural areas unemployment is high in the urban areas compared to uh, elderly that means uh, there is every possibility that you be unemployed and i be employed in the sense depending on the age young are becoming uh, younger age groups are more unemployed than older age groups women have higher unemployment than men educated have higher unemployment rate than uneducated these are some issues a oh, very uh, what is that uh, important to discuss and wherever possible in whatever way it is possible at the micro level maybe we can uh, look for some solutions so this particular session is going to talk about what is making women uh, what is that do not come out at par with men into the work uh, into the world of work okay and so we will be discussing different other things i thought of for bringing more data but even then data is available data is available data is not available both are right okay uh, that is if you google it you'll get the data so i i have concentrated i have spent more time on structuring and bringing it uh, uh, talking about the problems because you being uh, women students in specific i wanted to bring it to your notice what's happening to women okay so just a minute i'll share my uh, screen to you mm your entire screen no uh sharing is uh, present now no mm. how is it why i am familiar with this but even then i am not any uh, madam you did not receive my mail up huh? okay thank you so much uh somehow i am unable to mm. so this is my slide increasing unemployment among women and educated 
Of course, though I titled like that, I have given less data. I have concentrated more on this. Okay, uh, please, madam, go to the next slide. So, uh, research on women in India is, madam, can you do it uh, full screen? Uh, slideshow. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, research on women uh, in India. How is it? When did it get started? During 1970s, it got started. Okay. Um, Nerusu Maunika is reading this slide for me. Maunika. Maunika is not there. It's okay. Uh, research on women and associated issues of inequality, discrimination, violence, and empowerment have been on the Indian agenda since 1974. It is as per the Sustainable Development Goal number five of the UN. Dist uh, despite growing awareness of gender inequality and expanding initiatives, uh, gender-related issues continue to remain relevant and indeed uh, the changing structure of the society and economy now brings more challenges. That is, uh, the changing structure of India is bringing more challenges. Why? How? Let us see that. Next uh, slide, Pranam. Madam, next slide, please. Okay. So the broad areas or themes of research uh, can be divided into like this, related to women. The broad areas of research can be divided into like this, gender, work and welfare, gender and human development, violence and dis uh, discrimination, technology, entrepreneurship and leadership. Okay, these are some of the broad areas of uh, women's studies uh, research. Next slide, please, ma'am. Madam, next slide, please. Uh, I want every student to uh, focus on this. This is my phrase. Okay, uh, what I uh, what I am talking to you is that women from the world are missing. Few women are missing from the world. How am I going to explain it to you? How am I going to make you believe that yes, true, the number of women what we have today are much less than what are supposed to be. For that reason, I am uh, going to the next slide. See, these are the missing women in the world and India. Okay, during 2000, during 1960s, the female population as a proportion of total population was 49.97 in the world. Ma'am, your audio is not clear now. Why? Now? There will be little disturbance here at, uh, what is that, what do you say, um, maybe in the internet, but otherwise I'm okay. I am getting it here, right. Yes, no miss. Problem. Yes, sir. No problem. Yes, sir. Thank there you, is a problem, sir. I think, in uh, college. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, uh, missing women, I'm using the word missing women. So, during 1960s, uh, the women were... 49.97% of the total population of the world. In 2018, uh, that is, I have this data of 2018, one of the recent years. As per that, the population of female decreased from 49.97 to 49.58. This led to this many women missing. How many? 29,301,000. 
281. This many women are missing. That is, as the proportion got reduced from 49.9 to 49.5, that means around 0.4. This many, miss, uh, this many women are missing from the world. Come to India. During the 1960s, women were 48.3%. Now they are 48.0 in the total population. This led to how many? 5 million. issue so this is about the data okay madam next slide okay this is some data that is from the world bank i got it madam uh, that slide is necessary the previous slide ah. so these are something gender indicators in the india and the world Wherever NA is there, not available. Data is not available. Okay. Uh, so, what is it showing? That is, it is comparing the world and India and how India is faring in relation with the, uh, that is, in comparison with the world average that we are talking about. So, educational attainment, at least bachelor's or equivalent population uh, for the world, for the whole world, it's not available. But see the gender discrimination. It's 11.4 for men, and whereas it is only 6.7 for females. What is this? Educational attainment, at least bachelor's or equivalent. Population of, or that is, this data uh, is, regard, uh, is about 25 plus age group. Okay. Cumulative data. So it shows male are more educated, female are less educated. Come to the second one. It is employers. Employers in the sense, entrepreneurs, self-employed. So who give employment to others? Of course, at any point of time, employees will be more in number compared to employers. Though India has more self-employed, even then, the employers, that is who engage others for employment, are only 1.92% among male, and that's much less for women, that is only 055 for the world, the employers are the average number of employees, the average percentage of employers for the whole world was 3.74. That means what it shows in India, we have less number of uh, entrepreneurs or employers. Okay. Otherwise, there are so many self-employed, but they are unable to give employment to other people. For that reason, the world average is 3.74, but whereas India has only 1.92, and the same thing for women is 1.68 for the world, and whereas for India it is only 0.55. Employment in agriculture. See, here uh, India is, uh, what is it? Uh, Indian female employment in agriculture is high. It's 57%. Male employment in agriculture is only 40 the gap, the gender gap for world is less. 29% of the male are employed in agriculture as world average. 28% of the women are employed in agriculture across the world. But whereas CR ratios for us, more women are employed in agriculture compared to men. That is, women occupy low paid jobs. Okay. Next, employment to population ratio. Okay, uh, India, it's 77%. Okay, of course, world is 71. This is again, the data is very, very confusing. Students also get confused because uh, just now I was reading the work participation rate of uh, India is falling and less it is showing. But whereas uh, this particular the data is showing uh, work participation rate that is the workers okay employment employment in the sense it has to be workers otherwise this particular uh, data might be talking about formal employment okay even formal employment it is very less there is some confusions regarding the data but whatever it is employment to population ratio look at the look at the gender differences we are majorly concentrating on the male ma male female differences it's only 23 for india that is, and 77 
for uh, 70, uh, 23 for females and whereas 77 for male. This gender gap is less for the world as a whole. It is 71.45 and whereas for it, India, 77.23. That means that uh, the gap is higher for India compared to the world. Madam, next slide, please, madam. Here we are giving some data related to services available for population provided by, by the government, provided by the country, okay, and country as a whole. These services have an impact on women and work participation rate. Government expenditure on education, the world average is 4.9, India spends only 3.8. Because of the gender differences, uh, when it is out of pocket cost, there is every possibility that, and we have seen some cases of such kind, maybe as uh, family size got reduced and we are in better off places for that reason, maybe the girls, whoever are studying at St. Teresa may not be feeling that uh, discrimination, but otherwise I have seen some families where the male child is sent to a convent school, English medium, and the girl child is sent to the government school, Telugu medium. Okay, so when government is not spending, automatically it is the girls who lose. Okay, of course, for that reason, there are some government schemes now these days. Uh, but otherwise, even now, India is spending much less compared to the world average. Households with water on the premises. Of course, for the world, data is not available. But for us, for India, only 66%, at that means 33% of the population, do not have water within their home. That means they need to fetch water from somewhere. That means whose work is that? It's women's work. Then you have, of course, this is this type of data I seriously dislike of India's. Maternity leave benefits, is it given or not? World Bank is asking while asking the data. We India say that one means yes, maternity leave is given to women. Okay. Uh, how much uh, salary is paid? Is it zero salary or 100% salary? Something of that kind. So to that, what is it saying? Uh, it is uh, uh, law mandates paid un, uh, paid and un, un uh, un paid or unpaid maternity leave. And India is one with percentage of wages paid, 100% wages paid during the maternity. All of you know that how many women working in India get this maternity benefit. Okay, that means as per the ILO's uh, International Labor Organization's norms, is India giving maternity benefit? Yes. Is it giving uh, full salary? Yes. How many days it is, is it giving? It's giving six months. But how many, what percentage of the Indian women are receiving it is a big question. Seriously, research to be made, research to be done in this particular area to reveal the facts. Our professor, that is my professor uh, guiding me for my MPhil and PhD, used to say that. Research is not something uh, new you are going to identify. You are going to substantiate it. That is whatever the, uh, is available, whatever uh, data is known to people, you say that research says that, yes, it is true. Proving it with the data. Okay, that's research. So, uh, maternity benefit is like this. Cooking fuel. How many of them have uh, LPG? This data is as per 2000, uh, what is that? Data is available, latest data available between 2009 and 18. Okay, so 43%, of course, due to the Ujwala scheme uh, across North India and such things, maybe it must have increased. Maybe around 60% that is going by very magnanimously increasing uh, the coverage. We can say that maybe around the data is showing 43, but even then, otherwise also, maybe maximum 60% of the uh, households might be having LPG. That means the remaining 40%, even now, they do not have LPG connections. Who has to cook at home? Is it the men or women? So women have to fetch water. Women have to fetch firewood, then cook. Because of all that, what happens? Their work participation, their number of working hours get reduced. Otherwise, they have 
double burden. Uh, just to talk about, very recently I was uh, listening to one lecture by uh, Farzana Afridi, Farzana Afridi of ISI, Indian Statistical Institute. The data, what it talks about is, it's uh, they did a study on Ujwala scheme run by the government of India. Then what it shows is that, of course, it's our uh, old Deepam Padakam during the Chandrababu Naidu's period. Okay, now it is uh, extended across the country. That is otherwise across the country, they're making use of it and it's called Ujwala scheme. Okay, uh, so uh, the study, what it, uh, the Afridi study, what it says is that as soon as LPG facility is given to the households, the women are able to, their work participation rate is increasing. They are being released for work. Her study is that. Okay, so these are the services available for population and they have an impact on women, women's work and working conditions and their living conditions as such. Madam, next slide, please, madam. Okay, so these are the challenges women face. Okay, they are social and economic. Under the social, uh, as I was talking about uh, the, in the previous slide, that is, they need to fetch water, they need to fetch firewood, then uh, nutritional, uh, nutrition and health. Okay, women's health is taken much care only when she is pregnant for a majority of the women. At other places, her health is not taken into account. She, she gets attention only at that particular period because she, uh, she has to give birth to the children and then their vamsam will, uh, what is that, uh, continued for that reason, women's uh, reproductive health only at that time conditions. Work participation rates of women are low compared to male work participation rates. In urban areas, the work participation rates of females are much less compared to the male. Again, uh, that particular seminar which I was attending, I was uh, otherwise listening to of uh, Farzana, Fridi and others. Why the, in the uh, urban areas, the female work participation rate is low as women are uh, illiterate compared to men as women have less educational qualifications compared to men, then they have less skills compared to men. So in the job market, uh, from the supply side in the urban areas, they do not have appropriate skills to get employed. For that reason, they remain unemployed. First of all, they do not come out to work. Even if they come out, they do not have appropriate skills for that reason, automatically from the supply side, they are unable to supply quality labor force. Then automatically there is higher unemployment. Otherwise, they are not even in the labor force. They are not even in the labor force. Labor force in the sense they are not even offering themselves as workers. Okay. Next, coming to wages. Are men and women paid equal wages? No. Of course, again, for that, there is another thing. They are not into the similar jobs. They are into different types of jobs. For example, take agriculture. What men do is very different from that of what women do. Even in other sectors, sectors are segregated into different sectors. Uh, that is, in some of the sectors, you see more women. For example, education, health. Again, uh, in education, Women are more into primary to, uh, primary uh, education compared to higher education. Again, please don't compare St. Teresa because in St. Teresa is a women's college. Hence, you see all uh, women into higher education. But in general, uh, if it is government school, there will be more men. If it's a private school, there will be more women. Okay. So this is about the work participation rates. Then again, wages. We are talking about the wages. It's uh, even for the same job, women are paid less. They have less bargaining strength. They consider themselves as secondary earners. Though, they, though their uh, income is very, very important for the family, many of them, they consider themselves as secondary earners in the sense, uh, in Telugu, we call it as Okay, But otherwise, they do not consider it as the primary breadwinner. 
though they are though they are again i'm telling you it's not about you and me just see the uh, manual labor households construction workers domestic servants and all such people the women are the primary earners man does only one thing whenever he earns he will consume alcohol and good man sleeps at home quietly okay uh, another one who is not uh, not even you know, that is even he will be beating the wife children and all such things happen so women's income is very very primary but they do not consider it like that and for that reason they do not focus on the girls education so this is going on this is going on this is not getting rectified uh, that is you if you say that madam uh, are the conditions deteriorating i cannot say in some of the families yes there is improvement because of that only you have your uh, madam uh, ratnavani madam not ratnavani madam vani madam and here uh, sailaja madam and all these things and even bhavani for that matter that means we were able to come out of that vicious cycle we were able to educate ourselves but again there are so many which are in the which are remaining in the same condition no without any improvement working conditions i was talking about in another slide maternity benefit and all women work for longer hours look at nurses they work for longer hours okay uh, not only that in different other uh, segments sectors women work for longer hours because they are very docile they do not have the tendency to fight against okay that makes employers some of the employers especially in textiles and some of the things they choose women for this reason because they take less time to go for a cup of tea okay and all such things so they are workaholic and they do not want uh, they are docile that's all docile in the sense uh, they do not agitate okay so this is the challenges for women uh, social and economic next slide please madam okay uh, thank you raju sir without uh, raju sir's suggestion i must not have gone for this particular side what the government is doing in terms of to empower women yes government is doing but it's not sufficient you and me i am talking to each and every one whoever is present 61 members are present i am talking to each and every one of you very seriously okay only when you and me also work towards this maybe we can do we can bring some change as soon as i talk about uh, you and me have to work i remember when i was work when i was working at maristella i remember one uh, father i think uh, don bosco father was uh, talking about a story a starfish story okay when uh, one man was uh, walking on the uh, sea shore i believe and putting back each of the starfish into the sea so another man asked him i believe you are uh, putting back the starfish into the sea can you save all the starfish he said no i cannot uh, save all the starfish on the coast but uh, whichever starfish is put back into the sea uh, into the waters that got saved that gives me satisfaction in a similar fashion at our level we should work i am also maybe one of the starfish which got saved because of maristella and because of uh, professors like raju sir seriously this is from my heart i am talking to you okay because uh, i really i am a serious student and uh, i appreciate uh, raju sir's uh, efforts for uh, preparing for our classes and delivering the classes and i am a fan of macroeconomics because raju sir taught us okay coming back to uh, some of the initiatives uh, raju sir actually told me uh, to concentrate on this beti bachao maybe majority of you are uh, aware of it okay uh, which is uh, beti bachao is one one stop center scheme women helpline scheme nirbhaya ujwala actually now i understood um, there is one economist by name guy standing he is an economist uh, from ilo international labor organization i regularly i listen to him okay he says uh, india has lot many schemes thousands of schemes but whereas the penetration of the scheme and the beneficiaries the ben the impact of that particular scheme is much less 
because population is very high all those things but each government each new government when it comes to the power it floats more and more schemes they would like to pose to the people that they have so many schemes benefiting the people but penetration is very very low one example i'll give you okay uh, that is uh, in telangana uh the chief minister k chandrasekhar rao floated one scheme called double bedroom scheme that is for the poorer households he is going to give the double bedroom houses for me as an economist it is only to fool people there are so many poor people in the country in telangana for how many poor people is he going to give the two bedroom houses double bedroom houses is it possible uh, can the state government do this from whose money from whose pocket are they going to collect it okay it's not possible it is to fool people if at all if you are uh, also poor and i am also poor i think that you are getting benefited and you think that i am getting benefited but both of us do not get benefited it's only a marginal a very small percentage of the population 0.0000 will be getting benefited but it is to his credit that there is a scheme providing double bedroom houses to people okay food that is a public distribution system that can be done because it's less costly compared to double bedroom houses and all such things okay even raitu bandhu he was doing even uh, as far as raitu bandhu is concerned i am trying to educate the students uh, this session i think especially for the students too even raitu bandhu for that matter i feel that he is very very clever he is the one who started distributing money much before the elections from the state exchequer to the people and get votes okay so this is my opinion this is my personal opinion okay uh, of course it was implemented even at the central government that means they have copied the scheme undoubtedly okay because everyone would like to come back to power so these are the gimmicks so uh, some 4000 rupees or 8000 rupees some amount is given uh in the beginning actually he has given it to everyone just before the elections now i think now based on the pan number now depending on the acreage they are going to cut short the scheme okay so uh, coming to coming back to this ujjwala scheme there are two ujjwala schemes one is lpg and this ujjwala scheme is again slightly different that means government doesn't have sufficient names to select there are that many schemes in the government uh, that many schemes in the country for that reason similar names have to be put okay next uh, swadhar grah is another one nari shakti puraskar mahila police volunteers mahila shakti kendras again i i kept some space deliberately these are the these are some of the uh, schemes which are just making the women survive just for their survival beti bachao beti padhao bachao it's there in the scheme name itself that means if at all if these schemes are not there women may not even survive the girl children may not even survive okay so these are for the survival protection okay then i have with the space i have kept other schemes uh, with little uh, space they are steps support to training and empowerment program so these three programs yes makes women uh, contribute more towards work and receive better wages and have better living conditions if you remember in the previous slide also i have kept three uh, things under the economic one is work participation rate another one is wages and the third one is working conditions for this for these three the economic conditions of the women will improve with these things what is this uh next slide mm. so or uh, uh, by giving training to women by uh, when women come even um, of course i have uh, as soon as i I'm, i was not familiar with this particular scheme of the government of india but as soon as sir told me that i searched for it uh, it is actually they fund uh, construction of working hostels and all such things but till now in my life i did not see one centrally funded women's hostel women's working women's hostel okay that means as i told in the previous uh, thing schemes are many their penetration and their beneficiaries in relation to our population is much less 
okay mahila e heart of course i have seen this uh, saras it's happening because maybe as i was in nard for some time i must have seen that but otherwise also um, i have seen uh, saras exhibitions first time i visited this saras exhibition at vijayawada okay mahila e heart is digital platform that is uh, in support of this uh, digital india stand up india and all that these two schemes uh, encourage self help group uh, women and also artisans to uh, what is that uh, to demonstrate to exhibit their products one is uh, physical exhibition and another one is digital platform madam next uh, slide madam so i have just elaborated beti bachao you know that it is uh, it was introduced in 2015 of course a new name might be even prior to that also there were some schemes one stop center it is uh, actually to protect the women okay even i did not see even one one stop center of course i'm so fortunate i did not need this personally that's a different issue but even then i did not come across uh, these centers women helpline scheme oh, madam next one because some of them i have already discussed ujwala again this is not lpg connection ujwala this is comprehensive scheme for prevention of trafficking okay so these are the problems women face then working women hostels i spoke about mahila e heart also i have uh, spoke about it next one madam so india's labor force participation i am coming to the uh, that is i gave lot of introduction in terms of i am trying to make you identify i am trying to make you understand why women work participation rates are low why this uh, what is that uh, the differential uh, why the gender gap is more because of all the all those things whatever i spoke to you so india's labor force participation rate is very low by world standards that is it's not for may it's not for female it is both for male and female the average labor force participation rate is around 47 and the world average is about 66% uh if you remember one of in one of my slides i have shown it as 77 for uh, india and for uh, world it's little less than that but again as i told you the different database gives different data okay but uh, even definitional issues are also there what is labor force participation what is a worker both are different labor force participation is who are available for work in the labor market that means who are looking forward for work okay but whereas work participation rate or otherwise work workers is who are being who are working that is some of the differences for students it is a little difficult to understand that okay so leave it but whatever it is the labor force participation rate of india is less than the world average and india's uh, labor force participation dropped further to 46.2 46.3 in december 2020 compared to the previous year uh this is very evident even uh, as per when i was doing my phd i have compared a uh, census since 1872 the work participation rate i am not talking about labor force participation i am talking about work participation it was decreasing on a continuous basis so the explanation what we were giving is as uh, what is that uh, per capita incomes increased and at the same time as uh, educational uh, facilities education that is availability of education is increasing automatically when children are into schools and colleges they are not joining the labor force for that reason the work participation rate is uh, decreasing to that extent it's good to that extent it's good but if not at that particular point at another point they have to join the work force next slide madam now we are coming to the india's uh, female labor force participation india's female labor force participation rate is very low and another very uh, serious problem is it's falling i have one of my friend who is working at ses raju sir also knows her she is aparna uh, even they did some papers on this what they say is that uh, why labor force participation rate is falling is when a uh, when a woman is in the labor market looking for employment when she doesn't get a, get employment for few months for few years 
she drops from the labor market. She says, I'm not looking for employment. Of course, even her skills already, she has lesser skills and her skills become redundant. Because of all that, uh, th this is one of the explanations for the uh, falling labor force participation. When they are disappointed again and again in the labor market without getting an opportunity to work, they are withdrawing from the labor force. This is the analysis uh, the economists are talking about. I regularly listen to Santosh Mehrotra, uh, a labor economist. Okay, even uh, his studies also talk about these things. Uh, I think uh, students understood. Otherwise, uh, in the question answer session, again, I will, uh, depending on your questions, I'll focus on it. I repeat, this is very important for every one of you. Uh, India's labor force participation, female labor force participation is low, first of all. And another thing is, it's falling. Already low and now falling. Uh, in the very beginning, while starting the session, I asked why women are important. They are 50% of the population. If they do not work, automatically the size of our GDP is going to be low. The size of our GDP, per capita GDP is going to be less. For that reason, as they, as they also have two hands, if provided, pro provided they, they are given equal opportunity, the size of the GDP, there is every chance that the size of the GDP increases. For that reason, women have to come forward. But what's happening? Women are withdrawing from the labor force. Why are they withdrawing? When they uh, identify uh, unemployment, otherwise when their spouse is uh, earning uh, better per capita income of the, the otherwise household income is okay, then uh, the, the, we have also seen the women working conditions are very, very bad. When working conditions are very bad, she withdraws from work. Even related to, I do not exactly remember the another um, author, otherwise another researcher's name. In that Farzana Afridi's uh, session only, I was listening to others. Only when working conditions, I mean to say security of job, uh, what is that? Uh, working conditions improve, maybe more women will come forward to work. Because they do not have any problem related to food, clothing and shelter. And when working conditions are not good, they're satisfied with what they have. Women have to work, come forward for work to reduce the disparities of income in the economy. For that reason also, it is very, very necessary. Next, um, what is that we have next? Uh, researchers have shown that this fall is because of rising household incomes that reduce the need for women to join. That means, what is it showing? Women work because of a need. Okay, it's not an aspiration. When they need, they work. Again, it's not for a majority of us. Okay, uh, increased enrollment uh, into higher education, all of you for that matter, all the students whoever are pursuing, because of the higher, ed ed higher education and en enrollment ratios, they are not participating in the work. Okay, of course, culture and, cultural and uh, other factors, social factors. Further, it is evident that employers are also biased against hiring women. It's not all uh, employers, all the sectors and organizations sector is ready to employ formal sector because uh, whichever follows the uh, rules and regulations of the government maternity benefits social security child care leave for all that automatically they prefer men rather than women and even i told you on the other side even from the supply side they do not have appropriate skills okay drawing uh, women into the labor force by removing the impediments they face to at least bring their participation levels close to global standards is critically important for India to gain the demographic dividend. All the students may be well aware, they must have heard from many um, from uh, many of the resource persons, not only in this seminar, at other places also, at other sessions also, at other uh, conferences, uh, that demographic dividend. If we do not use this demography, demographic profile properly there are people who also say that it is not going to lead to demographic dividend it is going to be a demographic disaster 
when we were studying at Nagarjuna University, otherwise at Maristella College, pursuing uh, graduation and post-graduation, all the time we used to have one, we used to get one question. What are the problems of Indian economy? We used to write population was a problem. Okay. So during eight, late 80s and early 90s, we were considering uh, population as a problem, but now we are calling it as a dividend. Okay, India is one of the very young countries in the world. Okay, uh, and we are talking about the dividend. That means we are going to get some benefits. So are women are not part of uh, the population of the country? When we are not able to use half of the population of the country, how do we have demographic dividend? For that reason, the focus on women work participation rate becomes very, very important. Madam, next slide. I'm coming to the end, students, almost. Okay, uh, this is the unemployment rate. I took it from CMIE while copying, pasting, and all that. Uh, I missed the source. This is from CMIE, Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. As far as 21st February 22 is concerned, that star mark actually I kept for that. Um, we are in a in uh, working for management institutes. Uh, we were uh, told by many people, we are in a VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world okay uh, so each and every day we are experiencing that uka very very abundantly okay so i was about to start my session there is a placement drive happening and they wanted to occupy my room okay so i luckily i brought my laptop otherwise what must have been uh, i do not know but otherwise with my laptop i rushed to another place Okay, for that reason, actually, I took some 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, uh, it got delayed because I need to come switch on, settle again. So all these things, we are in a VUCA world. Okay, so in the VUCA world, I forgot to put the source. It is from CMIE. This particular data is from CMIE, Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. So as per that, what is this? India's unemployment rate, current unemployment rate is 7.9. Urban unemployment is 7.7. .7. For that reason only, rural migration to urban areas is increasing. Rural unemployment is 8. Maybe Manrega, we call it, no? Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act is the funds for Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act are low, not sufficient. Okay, uh, so rural unemployment is high. Separately, I did not give, uh, what is that? I was unable to immediately find, but I was reading uh, female unemployment rate is now in two digits. I read so many lectures, so I, I paid attention to so many lectures, sessions by Institute of Human Development. As I spoke to you, Santosh Mehrotra, Farzana Afridi, and other economists, female unemployment is in the two digit. It is around 13 to 14%. Okay, so it's uh, a problem, undoubtedly. Okay, next slide is from my research. That is, uh, we. Uh, that is, I did not give you the complete data. I gave you only the figure. What is it? Contribution of women towards family income among SAG households in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. I came to Eluru uh, for this particular study, uh, some two, three, two years back. I think in 2019 or early 2020. No, 2019, I believe. Okay. Uh, so what is it showing? Lower the family income. Women are uh, contributing even more than 50% to the household income. As family income is approaching 1 lakh per month, their contribution is the lowest. Their contribution is, of course, again, uh, what is that? And the final uh, today morning, I uh, what is that? Copied, pasted. I was unable to paste it properly. Okay, uh, had classes and such things. That is, I was planning for this particular uh, slide, but did not do it. So for that reason, it's not clear very much. But what it shows is that at the lower levels of family income, she is the one who is bringing bread to the family. She is the breadwinner. She is safeguarding the family from getting into poverty. But as, as far, whenever uh, the incomes are increasing, her incomes, her share in the household income is getting reduced. Uh, that is my, I would like to do, I would like to do more research in this particular area, proving that um, there are no uh, appropriate uh, uh, policies in place protecting the 
women workers there is no social security because of that when working conditions are not good and the family's household income is reasonably good they are withdrawing from the workforce okay so this uh, uh, this is from primary data this is from field survey across andhra pradesh and telangana all uh, in total 10 districts uh, five districts from andhra pradesh and five districts from telangana okay so this is about uh, the women i told you by i'll take one hour almost over okay uh, so this is almost my last slide there are some references uh, i was uh, giving um, even references actually i did not update the references uh, some of the references are correct but some of the references which i was using for some other uh, sessions so references is not completely um, that is it's not the comprehensive list there are some of the things which i did not use for this particular session there are some of the things which uh, i was unable to update so this is uh, about uh, increasing unemployment and women if you have any questions i'll be trying i i'll try my best to answer the questions thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am for the sharing views on uh, increasing unemployment among women and educated uh, really we have highlighted uh, research on women in india missing women in uh, world and india indian case then uh, gender indicators india versus world and then uh, uh, educate education attainment employment in agriculture employment to population and services available for population and uh, what are the challenges for women especially social and economic and uh, some of the initiatives of the central government for uh, women empowerment uh, like uh, beti bachao and beti padao and ujwal uh, scheme mahila ye health and all and not only that one uh, how that uh, uh, india's labor force participation uh, 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 i mean in a percentage wise and then india's so female labor participation is uh, very low and for the why what are the reasons behind and uh, present unemployment rate really is very nice and enriching and uh, hope our students uh, got uh, uh, knowledge on this particular uh, topic and girls uh, session is open for interaction and uh, now i invite clear Uh, if you have any queries, you can ask her, uh, ma'am, Dr. Bhavani, ma'am. Please do. Hello. Ma'am, good evening. Good afternoon, ma'am. Please. Ma'am, my question is, irrespective of the initiatives taken by the government, why women are not still empowered selfly, ma'am? that is irrespective of the schemes why women are uh, still lagging behind is it yes ma'am true india is a very big country what is the total population of the country 135 crores ma'am ah with for this big population when there are so many poor people of food needs that is public distribution system food security for those uh, things government is spending you know it well even during covid there is heavy criticism that government is unable to even provide health facilities so when government is unable to provide uh, food security also very recently we have we have reached that particular stage okay but otherwise prior to that um, it was not even food security there was not even uh, we do not even have proper food security i think 15 years back i was reading one article otherwise news item in orissa people were eating in the mango there will be some uh, that uh, inner part will be there no that is a tenka we call it as in telugu one tribe eats that i believe they were eating it for a very long time they have that uh, tradition of eating that otherwise they have that habit of eating it but even then it got spoiled and they eat it and some of them died 
that means why do people eat such things when they do not have proper food so when government is uh, as i told you is proposing different schemes but unable to uh, what is allocate sufficient funds even if there is allocation it is unable to implement it at the grassroots so you and me again have to popularize these schemes okay today i have given you some schemes you know all of you please uh, browse what is this scheme all about wherever it is possible uh, you make them understand this i was very much shocked to understand or uh, some of my colleagues at another place uh, avas yojana they were not familiar with avas yojana avas yojana is government gives a subsidy up to 2 lakhs plus when you when you construct your first house how many people know they do not know allocations are there but even then people do not have awareness they do not make use of leave about that a small scheme insurance scheme it's called that's what i named myself as Uh, what is that financial inclusion and social change enthusiast as soon as i see young people i'll be talking about it do you have a bank account yes, yes, yes. no ah. uh, do you have uh, do you know pm jjby and pm sby no ma'am pm jjby is uh, prime minister's jeevan jyoti bima yojana 330 rupees per annum is 330 rupees per annum very high for you no ma'am is 12 rupees per annum very big amount for you no ma'am there is one advertisement with amita bachchan per month 1 rupee 12 rupees msby is 12 rupees even that we are not doing uh meri madam my sincere request to you is yes uh, with this lecture otherwise uh, after this particular session let saint teresa students all the students have pm jjby and pm msby sure ma'am a small step because when yes. these students do they may talk to their cousins they may talk to their friends yes okay so sure. it will have a much bigger impact i'm not pro modi i'm not yes. pro modi okay but i i love my country yes okay sure. so uh, this is the small thing what we can do for our country because there are schemes available but it's not getting penetrated only when people like you and me start it will get penetrated i think i answered your i answered her question There are no answers. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Ma'am, one more question is that in the yes. Next one. Ma'am, uh, is should more important to literate a woman than a man? I think you know it well. Mother is the one who brings up the who uh, what is that contributes to the household. Mother more than a man. so when a woman is literate her children will be better off okay uh, again whenever you talk to me something i'll be telling you a story i think all of you are well very well aware in telangana in hyderabad one veterinary doctor was raped and murdered four young men young men were involved seriously i was crying on the day when this happened crying in the sense not uh, yes i was so sad i was so bad in my condition okay later when those boys were killed even on that day i cried the reason is uh, if at all if the those boys mother must have been educated it must not have happened i feel when my college says timings are 9 to 4:30 99.9% i come before 9 never i go before 4:30 because i am worried about my tomorrow my my employment all such things okay but how these young men did this big uh, thing and got caught and got killed that means they do not have any hope for tomorrow they are living just for today okay for that reason women need to get educated and bring up children for the sake of better society and for a better economy thank you ma'am Ma'am, why is unemployment higher among the educated? Who is asking? May I see? May ma? Can I see you? You try. Why is unemployment higher among the educated? You just try to answer this. <laughs> What are you studying? 
studying degree ma'am degree which course ba ma'am ba okay uh, are you going to get employed are you are you going to look for some employment or the other yes ma'am how much salary do you expect this these are answers from my side these need not be 100% right answers hmm. how much salary are you expecting 20 ma'am 20 what 20 rupees 1000 huh 1000 20000s okay ask any private sector private uh, school how much are they giving in eluru 10 or 15 ma'am ah, that means how, what are you going to become i become a teacher ma'am you are going to become unemployed why your expectation of the salary is 20000 but whereas the schools are offering only 10000 even if you are skilled i'm not talking about uh, your skills i'm only talking about this so your family has good fam good uh, assets okay um, good uh, family income so when you are not getting 20 and when they are offering only 10000 you may feel that why should i work for 10000 let me sit at home i think these are the reasons for unemployment Okay. okay as i told you in social sciences i cannot say that this is the correct answer okay this is one of the answers okay ma'am thank you ma'am ma'am i'm lecturer in history uh, why educated women unemployed more than men ma'am ah uh, when uh, a woman doesn't get uh, an uh, doesn't get employment opportunity family says okay it's okay you sit at home okay again the same thing but whereas ujjogam purusha lakshanam okay societal things so what i have so i used to when i was uh, teaching at b schools and all uh, father will be paying some 4 lakhs or 5 lakhs for the btec course then he doesn't get a good employment as per his expected salary so he will do his pgdm even after that he doesn't get good employment so he will ask his father send me to other countries canada australia okay so one day he came and told me i am asking my father he is not giving money he is asking his father to sell away some of the land and give him money that means still he gets uh, the reasonable salary what he wants he would like to pursue education and uh, go here and there and spend money that is for the rich households but what about the uh, what is that those who do not have property to sell for uh, sending the children sending the male uh, boys to foreign countries and all they have to work if not today tomorrow they have to work hence as per the societal things may even man as soon as he crosses some 22 23 and all he will be in a uh, uh, what is that he will be very eager to get into employment that means his will to get employed uh, is going to be higher compared to a woman woman as soon as she gets married she feels amma my husband is earning i need not work social factors ma'am if you interested to again work. i am telling again i am telling these are some of the answers come on you are telling something else ma'am if she is uh, interested to work after marriage also like me yeah. they'll work like your mary madam they will work <laughs> <laughs> as simple as that if you have the help you will work you will acquire appropriate skills and you will work but if you lose that interest you won't work but family will not allow uh, her to work no ma'am if she is sitting at home only is the family who decides who is that family what ma'am what an individual i am an individual okay you are well educated so you will be talking to them i need to work i need to be self sufficient why should i depend on my husband's income god has given me two hands to work of course into service sector a brain working brain okay so automatically when i am capable of working why should i sit at home okay so that uh, attitude you should have if you have that attitude you will work okay ma'am thank you ma'am thank you
madam shall we uh, uh, raju sir raju sir said uh, he has something to something to ask raju sir sir can i are the students questions uh, over <laughs> questions of the students is over i think we, uh, there are some more eager to ask you questions i'm i'm so happy these days students asking questions is yeah, yeah, actually they are, not they are, there they are <laughs> very interesting questions right and i also surprised how you elicited answer from them through questions <laughs> <laughs> amazing huh why uh, you have actually answered the uh, her question why educated people are unemployed but still again uh, uh, no she asked you repeated the same question to you uh, anyway uh, th thank you very much uh, i enjoyed uh, listening to you bhavani thank you sir uh, bhavani was very you know uh, eager student when she was a student i found her to be very eager and she like sometimes i used to get irritated also because she is <laughs> always uh, questioning and uh, even on the way uh, you know stage somewhere she catches me uh, and asks me questions and uh, when i am uh, inside my room also she comes and asks me questions so when i when i ever i see bhavani i will be a little bit uh, you know worried what questions she is going to ask <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, three names you mentioned, Rabi Bhavani. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, one name uh, you did not mention. Uh, oh. That is about missing women. The missing women is of... from the World Bank. Uh, no, mm, uh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, World Bank uh, from missing women concept is uh, first uh, coined by Amartya Sen. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, later uh, it, it became uh, those days you were uh, young. Uh, you were not even I don't know uh, those days. Uh, uh, you were just a student or whatever. You were not into research. But if you are in research, uh, like you know, in the case of Marhotra and that uh, guy standing, <laughs> there are two other big names you mentioned. Uh, you would have caught this. Uh, that is one thing. Um, but somehow, uh, don't you think that uh, that concept of missing woman is not uh, in uh, academic circles anymore? I don't see much uh, discussion about missing woman today. That means uh, data is being shown that uh, uh, it is improving, no sir. So when data is shown that, for that reason only, while in that graph also I was talking to the students, uh, that is manipulating data is uh, we are experts in that. Yeah. So because of that, we are showing that the sex ratios are improving and uh, the policies, whatever we are adopting, are uh, showing positive things. For that reason, as soon as the condition is improving, we don't talk about it. That's one. Of course, uh, another thing is, I read when for my research, uh, uh, Professor Irudai Rajan's article. What mm -hmm. he says is, uh, it is uh, the gender um, ratios, the adverse sex ratio is because of positive reasons. In the sense, he talks about the biological things. Male fetus is very, very weak compared to the female fetus. So because of the improvement in the medical facilities, the male fetus is getting, uh, is, uh, is uh, being protected. For that reason, masculinity increased, he says. And another thing what he says is, uh, when uh, violence is there in the country, in the state, he gives the example of Rathayatras. Wherever the Rathayatras happened um, uh, at, during in those districts, they have uh, reported lesser number of women. That is, they do they do not reveal the number of women. Uh, so it's not actually gender. Uh, women are not uh, actually less, but even if it is less, it is because of positive reasons. Irudai Rajan talks about sir. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other thing is. Uh, infanticide and uh, uh, feticide uh, were on the rise when actually Amartya Sen uh, presented this concept of missing women. Well, uh, and uh, there are no, no, there is no data about uh, uh, WHO or uh, even uh, our own health department won't uh, reveal any data about abortions, number of abortions in 2022. Like that, we don't get any. Uh, 
Right? Yes, sir. You can't decide, definitely they won't. Correct. But if your uh, uh, deaths and births department is working efficiently, okay. actually, even, uh, even if that happens, you know, abortion yes, takes place or uh, some uh, infanticide takes place, uh, they have to report. Even in case of infanticide, they have to report to municipality so and so uh, young uh, child died. <clears throat> Abortion definitely the hospital has to report to municipality. Infanticide is shown as a natural death. Correct. Uh, 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 infant mortality <coughs> is not reported in India. They just you know a, a, boy, a boy or a girl under the age of one dies and simply they finish off those formalities. They don't Correct. report. Correct. Therefore, we are not uh, having uh, sufficient uh, information. Uh, what you have said is right. Uh, yes. anyway, I don't want to go more into that, uh, but I, I uh, really was appreciating you about uh, the concept about uh, gay standing. <laughs> the amazing person, gay standing. Eh? Yes, sir. He developed the concept of, uh, you know, uh, precariat. Precariat. The dangerous he, class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most dangerous class is going, is on the rise. Uh, These four men are part of it. Yeah, you, you remember there is uh, this concept called as a, in English literature, they talk about what is called as a portmanteau. Portmanteau is like, you know, you, you combine uh, uh, breakfast and lunch and make it as a bre uh, uh, brunch. Am I right? Breakfast ah, and lunch, yes, you sir. call it as a brunch. Here, he, he mixed the precarious is a situation and the working class working class in uh, you know communist uh, language is a proletariat a socialist is called proletariat working class right so he mixed cleverly the that, uh, proletariat and precariat into a developed a concept called the precariat right right uh, and I, I, when you mentioned about his name my uh, thoughts went to him <laughs> And also the other important thing you said about uh, today, I appreciate you for that, is uh, about um, Santosh Mahalutra. Do you remember Santosh Mahalutra? He was very much in news. He, is, he was in the ANU at the time. When one uh, famous program of uh, Manmohan Singh, that is uh, um, 